Oh, first, the good news about the 25 Carrera T. It has a manual. The second thing I think that is good news is that it only comes in a manual. That was one of the things as we would see cars come and go at the store here that you'd go around and you have to peek in the window to see if it's a real T as in manual transmission or a PDK. Didn't understand if somebody was really into the driving aspect of a Carrera T, why they would opt it for a PDK transmission, um, just because it's more of a raw driver focused, you want to be able to shift and to red match and to heel toe and to do all those things that add to the driver engagement that is the draw of the T. Uh, why not then just get a base Carrera if you wanted to get just a PDK transmission on your base Carrera engine? So a few things to note, take note about the new Carrera T. Uh, it's a six-speed transmission now instead of a seven-speed, which uh, they say that they've uh, changed the ratios in the transmission, and that also it has the rev matching that you can get on any other manual, but you could also disengage it, which uh, I think is a good call. Another uh, cool thing is they have integrated the Track Precision app into the Dot2 Carrera T, which if you've ever played with that, that Precision Track app, is really cool because it gives you a lot of data. You could even go driving around public roads. In fact, I did a video about it. I'll link it up here uh, where I drove the car and then used the in-car camera feed from the Track Precision app as the in-car camera. So you can see the inputs, brake and acceleration, the steering inputs, G-forces, where you are on your route that you've pre-planned. So it is super cool. But the, the the quirkiness of that app is it could be iffy when you're integrating the Track Precision app into the My Por or not My Porsche, a CarPlay, because that's what it's tied to. It's an app within CarPlay that you would access into the car and whether or not it would sync correctly between your phone GPS and the car GPS and CarPlay, it could be kind of iffy. Uh, so I found that it would be better not to even hook up CarPlay when, you, when you're using the Track Precision app and just use uh, the app within your phone uh, to track your numbers or to track the data in the app. So the fact that they have it in, included, I can't wait to see what that looks like um, to have it included into the digital instrument cluster. Because it has a sport exhaust system. Now, this will be interesting because I just drove the Dot 2 Carrera the other day for the first time. And I'm going to do a full review video on it. But what I noticed about the sport exhaust system on the Dot 2, and I don't know if this is because they had to, for you know, to keep up with the Lambda 1 uh, emissions update in Europe, that they had to add something into the exhaust system. But you definitely have a quieter exhaust note in the 992.2 compared to the dot one. And I'll talk more about that when I do the review of the driving uh, video. But the fact that it has the sport exhaust system as standard, that's fine. But I think anybody that gets a, a manual Carrera T.2 is going to want to get some kind of an aftermarket exhaust or at least a, a cat back system so that you could hear the exhaust more. Because to me, there's enough of a difference if you're interested in the note of that, you know, roaring flat six that you're going to want to accentuate it with some kind of a tip or, a, you know, a rear cat back delete or something like that. Like they gave it Carrera S brakes because this is going uh, to 350 millimeter front disc with a six uh, pot caliper, whereas on the, the old Carrera T of the 992, it only had the four four piston calipers on the front. So that's a good, that's a good thing because bigger, more brakes is always better. Uh, it has rear axle steering as standard. I like the rear axle steering, uh, especially you notice it when you're in a parking lot and it's just easier to, to make, it basically shortens your wheel base when you're driving slow and then lengthens it when you're going fast by turning the rear wheels in the same direction as the front wheels. So you kind of like kind of crab walk over if you're making quick lane changes and things like that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, they also quicken the steering ratio and 
I'm wondering if that means fewer turns lock to lock. So that'll be interesting to test out to see what that means. But I'm sure it's a better thing, especially in a sports car. You want to have quicker steering. And they've also changed the anti-roll bars. I'm guessing maybe thicker anti-roll bars to make it more stable under sporty driving um, conditions. It says specific Carrera T aerodynamic adjustments. Uh, so can't wait to see what that means uh, in a car. I'm sure it's not going to be radical adjustments, but maybe a different uh, chin spoiler or uh, maybe a wing, the rear wing angle is going to be different, maybe something underneath the body of the car. But that is uh, yet to see what is going to be uh, changed on that. A typical lightweight glass to reduce a sound deadening is a good thing. Uh, it says special stickers with a manual shift pattern is going to be on the rear quarter windows. I think nobody needs that, especially if you understand how to tell the difference between a dot one and a dot two Carrera, that before you even get close enough to see the quarter windows, you'll know it's a T, it's going to be a manual transmission. So I think the fact of putting the stickers on the side is redundant and, un and unnecessary. I'd probably remove them. I like the fact that they're changing the wheel color. It used to be they had a, like a standard stock Carrera uh, Carrera T wheel on the previous generation. Now that they're giving it like Carrera S wheels and it's going to be a two-tone wheel. More detail is going to make it look like an upgrade. Then we come to the price. $134,000 and $147,000 starting price. And I think we're going to see this across the line of all the 911s, the dot two 911s. I don't know if you've seen with the latest GT3 update, the $40,000 difference between a 20, uh, 23 and a 25. I think it's 50 grand between a 22 and a 25. And I think Porsche is doing that because they see um, what the cars are trading for aftermarket, contributing to the fact that Porsche is raising the prices because they see how quick it, pe people are willing to pay for the upgraded model. Um, so it'll be, we'll see if that affects sales, if people are going to uh, come to the point to saying, ah, that's too much for this specific thing. Maybe not in the, in the GT3, because if you're playing in that ballpark, you have money that it's not a big deal that to spend an extra $40,000 to be the first guy to have the your car of choice, especially if you're going to custom order it. Um, maybe for the Carrera T, we'll see if it slows down um, the desirability because of the, it looks like maybe $20,000 is up on a T. Um, and also the fact that they have a cabriolet. That is an interesting decision. Understandable. Why not? Some people want to, cab uh, to have a, a simple 911 manual uh, cabriolet. Cabriolets aren't my favorite choice for the 911. I, I just don't like. I think Porsche did a really good job with keeping the Porsche fly line when the top's up. But whenever I drive a cabriolet, I always leave the top up because I just don't like the way that the car looks with the top down. But uh, excited about the new Carrera T. Can't wait to see those in the store and to be able to uh, drive them around and tell you what differences I noticed. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.